Hey everyone, Jason here. Today I'm going to be working on an iPhone 6 that was sent here because it will not turn on. Uh, this thing came all the way from Canada and the description I got was that the guy was on Facebook, battery was at 90% and it just all of a sudden went pfft, dead. Now this phone did come with a note attached to it asking me if I would do a video on it. I can't do a video on every one of them because normal repair it's it, it's not normal repair is not all video material so this here may come as what I've been heard as caused called a uh, please bro solution which is just hilarious uh, absolutely hilarious so here's your please bro solution to VCC main shorted randomly on an iPhone 6 because this is a really really common problem and I don't think I've posted a video on it yet so let's get started with this repair the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what it is that brought me to this conclusion and what I did to decide that this was shorted uh, you know this is a phone that's had the battery hooked up hooked up to it all the way here people have done who knows what to it to try to get it to come on so Here's what I've done. I've actually set my power supply. Let me see if you can see that. I've got my power supply set to, I'm going to go ahead and set this thing to battery voltage, which is going to be, we're going to go to about 4 volts which is normally where this thing stays set, but I've been doing some really oddball troubleshooting. So um, so right here at about four volts. Now I'm gonna drop our amperage all the way to zero, which on this cheap supply is also gonna drop the voltage to zero, so you can't tell where your voltage is at when the amperage is turned down. So from there, I'm gonna short my two leads together. This, this is my tweezer probe thing. I don't know what it is. I ordered it a long time ago and I use it all the time and I get ticked off daily about this 12 inch cord. So I squeeze my tweezers together. That's got the supply shorted. Now we're going to turn the current up. I'm going to go ahead and let two amps of current flow. Okay, so there we are at two amps. No matter what happens on the other end of this thing, two amps is the maximum load that I can give it. So let's go ahead and get started on this repair. I'm going to slide this thing over so that you can, let's see, that's microscope. You should be able to see the phone there. Now I'm going to go ahead and hook my probes up here to where I've got positive on positive, ground on ground. And right off the bat, as soon as I touch it, right now I'm not touching, now I'm going to squeeze a little bit and touch the contact. As soon as I do that, I get two amps on the supply which is a dead short. That means we have a short somewhere and it's most likely either on the main battery line or it's on VCC main. Before I do this, I'm gonna say that my predictions here, and I haven't checked for heat or anything, I don't know where this problem's gonna be at, but my prediction here is that one of the caps along the backlight circuit shorted, but who knows, you know, you, you don't know, not until not you dig in and try it. So let's go ahead and get the board out of this phone We're going to need a Phillips screwdriver. We're going to need tweezers. We're going to need our handy dandy standoff post tool that Fred Wooding sent me, which is totally awesome. And let's see, we're going to need a flathead screwdriver. And let's yank the, let's take the board out of this thing. Am my audio working? Yes, yes, the audio is working. I guess I could check for hot spots or something first and could prevent me from pulling the board out of it. But, you know, any of you watching this channel by now, you know, anytime I try to take shortcuts to prevent from pulling the board out of it, I always pull the board out of it. I don't think I got a single video up where I tried to prevent myself from having to pull the board out where I actually didn't have to pull the board out. Like, you always have to pull the board out. All right, just a few more screws on this thing. Yeah, I've really, really, really been thankful for uh, for my position here and being able to microsolder for a living. You know, it's just this whole thing has been a, a really, really, really positive experience, and I look for it to be very, very positive moving forward as well. It's taught me many things about freedom and your ability to make decisions for yourself. 
and if you're uh, if you're able to do things in an independent way you start to discover freedoms that you wouldn't really realize that you had if you had to work under a boss every day and I don't think um, you know I don't think everybody's miserable at their jobs a lot of people I'm sure a lot of people love their jobs but I'm one of these people that I was I, I've been miserable at every job that I've ever had and in the past I'd blame myself and always trying to think about what I'm doing wrong and really the the reality of the matter is is that I wasn't doing anything wrong I just didn't appreciate the the paid slavery and I'm not sure where I'm going with that so I'm gonna stop talking about it and take the board out of this phone so we can do what everybody is here to do and that is repair stuff for money that is something that I have really 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 been trying to fine-tune here lately and that's how to do this more profitably without charging an arm and a leg for it so all right there's the board there's the phone going in the customer's basket. Let's go ahead and set our screw pad aside. Now with everything disconnected from this phone, let's just go ahead and make sure we still have a short. I'm going to take my A node here and put it on A node. I'm going to put ground on ground. I said A node just for my anode trolls. There we go. We still have a 2 amp short. So this thing is absolutely shorted. Uh, now what I'm going to show you here Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take some measurements on this one. I am going to peel off this bottom sticker so that we can get a good look at everybody underneath here. I don't know if I said it yet, but I'm here, or if I'm saying your name right, this is your phone. You asked me a couple of times to do a video on it, and uh, I didn't really... Oh, this is an iPhone 6 and not a 6 Plus. Let me heat this up a little bit. And this is why my, my handle's backwards on my hot air station. So, yeah, I'm here. You asked me to do a video on this one a couple of times. Uh, that is a request that I get about 10 times per day. And it's not one that I always respond to because not all repairs are good video material. Um, I, I'll be completely honest. I chose this one because I felt like it's going to be a really, really straightforward repair. And it can most likely help a lot of, uh, a lot of the people that are following my channel to fix this very same problem. Now most of you are probably more advanced than this and you're not going to learn a, a dang thing, but some of you could benefit from this. This may, this, this could be like a please bro solution because if it's the caps that I think it is, man they short like nobody's business and it's always like after a thump or just completely at random. So let's grab our multimeter I'm going to be set up here for continuity mode. I'm currently reading 0L, so we have an open circuit. And I'm going to switch over to the microscope. I guess to track this down in proper order, let's start on the battery line. Let's get down here on our battery line, and let's check continuity between VBAT and ground. And I get almost 1,500 ohms. Let's put our probes in the proper polarity here and I get 2,000 ohms 2,000 ohms is not is not letting enough electricity pass through for 5 volts to give us 2 amps or probably beyond I bet it would give us as much as that supply would offer so since I am getting a reading here that's um, that's fairly high resistance I know that this is nothing on the battery line it's something below that something that's opening so now we're going to check VCC main. I always like screwing around with VCC main for initial testing right alongside of the main PMIC. I, I don't know why, but I know we can get right here. And this is VCC main. And VCC main is producing zero ohms. So, and I did get on the right side of that, right? Yeah. So we got zero ohms on VCC main, which means VCC main is short of the ground. And then you got the big question here. Where is VCC main shorted to ground? Well, let's figure this out. 
I now this is something that I am into to make money I mean the YouTube part of this these videos I love putting this online I love showing people what I'm doing but as far as the repair side of this although I love doing it I am doing this for money so in order to do this profitably you have to try to minimize the amount of time that you're gonna spend on a repair while still keeping it safe and still keeping it practical so what I'm getting to here is the way that I'm going to narrow this down is I am actually going to use current and I'm going to skip straight to current. Now I could stand or sit here and I could pick around on VCC main at different ends of the board and I can try to figure out like where I've got lower or higher resistance and generalize what part of the board we're getting heat on. But that takes forever. <laughs> that I mean that, that takes absolutely forever. And I have an issue with using current if I'm going to put the current in on the battery line because of um, let me pull up the schematic here on the 6 plus and show you where uh, primarily VCC main is coming from I said 6 plus didn't I? didn't uh, <laughs> didn't I I meant iPhone 6 so let's pull up the schematic here for iPhone 6 Okay, and we're going to search for, well, let's just drill down to Tigris real quick here. Oops, did I spell it right? Should be right down here by TriStar, yeah? Speaker amp, backlight. Oh, why do I always do this when I'm making a video? I was actually going to live stream this one, but bandwidth is not going to cooperate with me today. I'm hoping my ISP... can possibly get me some more upstream okay so here we are on Tigris and what I find out here is that even if you pull U1401 off the board even if you get rid of U1401 Q1403 is still going to provide a sufficient connection between um, the battery line and VCC main is that on my screen or am I too far off I think I'm too far off so what I ran into, run into is if I'm trying to use current into the battery line to troubleshoot a short on VCC main, Q1403 gets hotter than a firecracker because it's stuck sinking all the current. So let's start looking for a place here to squirt some current into VCC main. Where did ZXW go? Did it? Oh, it crashed. You know, I got to be honest, I didn't realize... Okay, I got I got to be honest. I did not realize that there were board view files available for pads. I just I didn't know it. I felt so dumb when I figured it out. So, I want to thank the Art of Repair. I learned that from uh, you know, I don't I wasn't a subscriber of your channel. Honestly, I don't even know if I realized that you were posting videos, but you were popped up in my recommended stuff and I clicked on it and thought, oh, "I'm so dumb. I am so dumb." So, thanks, man. That's awesome. Today we're still using ZXW and we're going to open up the iPhone 6 and we are going to look for a place to put current into VCC main and I'm going to do that because I want to figure out what in God's name is getting warm. I mean there's thousands of components on this board, hundreds, whatever, how many are actually there, somebody can probably tell me. But you got all these components on front and back and what are you going to do? You're going to hunt all over everything visual inspection can do a lot like when caps are blown visually inspecting them can show you a lot but if you don't know where the short is where are you gonna start so let's get VCC main lit up here if we click on one pat one that's uh, one line that is VCC main we've got all of these options here here's everywhere am I even on screen capture I am, but I'm full screen and I'm only capturing at 720p, so let's adjust this. So we have all these options for VCC main. Anywhere here we can get it in, and it really doesn't matter because it's all part of one big solid hunk of, of network. So uh, what we're going to do to get power into that, I'm going to switch probes to something that's a little more fine. I'm going to use these ones that I soldered needles to back in the day. OK, 
Okay, now we are going to go ahead, I'm going to reset my current. I'm going to short my probes together here. We're still at 2 amps. So let's go ahead, we're going to drop our voltage a little bit. You know, I really don't know where this short is. I know it's on VCC main. Look at that thing go up when I turn the knob down. Tell me these power supplies will not get you in trouble. I'm getting the new power supply soon, guys. This thing is cheap. Yeah, it's made a lot of money. Yeah, but all right. So let's go two volts, short them. We should still have two amps. So we got two amps at two volts, and we're going to get power in here on VCC main, and I am going to go, let's see. Let's go ahead and give it, oh, I'm looking on my screen capture. No wonder I can't see it. <laughs> All right, so let's put our two amps. We want something that's easy to recognize. You don't want to screw up and do this like, and not be able to, you know, and, and do it on the wrong part because what if you put two volts into a one V eight or into a, a one volt line or something? It, you want to be careful. I'll probably get scrutinized because I'm going to do this right next to the PMIC, but this is easy for me to recognize. You got this row of caps, and then you got these three little guys here, and I know that the first post closest to the three little guys is VCC main. Perfect spot to put it in. And let's go ahead and give you microscope here. Let's just do it on that same same screen then you'll know exactly where I'm at so I'm going on the schematic you got little guy you know these three little guys and then right here is VCC main so we're gonna put power right there in, on VCC main we're gonna put our ground on ground other probe on VCC main And I'm feeling which end of the board is getting hot, top or bottom. I'm holding two amps on VCC main. We won't go too much longer at this. Just until I start to feel a little bit of warmth, top or bottom. I want to know which shield I'm pulling. Before I start pulling shields at random, I'm trying to make money, for crying out loud. All right, so I'm kicking my probes aside, feeling all over the place. I'm going to say we had a little bit of heat in the CPU area. We're going to do that once more. Okay, so I'm going to put my ground probe on the shield right here, ground probe on ground, and I'm going to put my A node probe on VCC main. And this thing is going to sit here cranking away at 2 amps. I know that's quite a bit of current, but even at 2 amps, these boards dissipate heat so fast. If it's a little bit of current, it takes you forever to find it if you're using heat. And I've got, you'll see my blue glove on both sides of the screen there. I've got one hand, my right hand on the bottom end of the board, and I've got my left hand on the top end of the board. Kick our probes aside. Let's feel around. I'm going to say we've got a tiny bit more heat on the top end of the board than we do the bottom. And this is two amps, man. Two amps of current, and it, I'm talking a tiny bit of heat. And you know it's a teeny tiny little component that's baking. So somewhere something should be turning black. So my next step with this repair here is to go ahead and pull the, uh, pull the shield. Because I did feel like I got a little more warmth from here, but at two amps, that could have been just the current from my, I mean, that could have been the heat generated by my probes. So let's go ahead and start letting this hot air heat up. And while it does it, I'm going to kind of start uh, just applying a general heat to the board here and heating this board up. Okay, we should be just about heated far enough. I always like to grab this one corner up here. Now, I'm not pulling on this by any means. 
I'm actually just waiting for it to give a little bit and then I'm moving my heat around. Should give any second. There we go. Or I thought it was going to give. There we go. Alright. Our shield is off. And let's get you back to the microscope with the quickness. let this board cool down. Now the next place, like whenever I said that I suspected this one to be easy, what I'm suspecting, I wonder why they don't switch every time. What I'm suspecting is for th one of these two caps over here to be shorted. That's very common. Uh, we could also look at C5202RF. This one, this one is really, really common. But honestly, it could be anything. I mean, it can be absolutely anything. But being that we've got a solid zero ohms, I don't believe that it's going to be anything below VCC main. It's going to be VCC main itself. And these two guys here, these are also VCC main. And I could be imagining things, but one of them looks slightly discolored. Continue letting that board cool for a minute. Okay, so now I'm going to take and put my two amps on this cap right here. I still get two amps. We're going to put a tiny little drop of alcohol on there. Okay, so for like the first time in eons, our short, wait a minute, what did I see over there? Still holding two amps. And I cannot detect where the warm is coming from. Now you tell me these things don't dissipate heat like crazy. It is actually not those caps. Alright, so where else do we have VCC main? This one's going to be an easy one. Yeah, alright, well let's fix it. We have VCC main here and here. That's where we're just checking, but I cannot get any heat to pop up over here. I'm just, I'm not feeling heat anywhere. So on the top end of the board, VCC main can be any of this stuff, can be Wi-Fi IC. It can be a lot of stuff. So two amps is just not, it's not cutting the mustard. Let's give this thing more power. Shorten my probes. We're going to go, let's do 3 amps of current. We'll increase by 50%, and we're at 1.6 volts. Ah, people are going to say, you're putting that much current through it, but what about this and this and this? But look, this is for making money. 
and I have the freedom to do this repair however I want provided it leaves here repaired. So we're holding 3 amps of current in the VCC main. Good God, 3 amps of current. And nothing's catching on fire yet. Come on. I just I wish something would catch on fire for the sake of getting more views. And because then I would know where the short was at. Like, catch on fire, damn you. This is such a big short. All right, let's go ahead and pull the bottom shield and have a look at that. See, there I go, trying to save time by not doing something. All right, trying to save time to figure out which shield to pull first, and I'm just going to pull them all anyway, right? Of course, why not? Alright, let's start heating this thing up. Snap, crackle, pop, baby. Let it go. Did we see anything burnt black? Anything that looks like charcoal today. Three amps of current should turn one of these little 01005 components into charcoal. It ought to be looking like a chimney, but... No, I, I get nothing. No heat or anything. So in order to find heat, we got to get rid of it first. Let's cool this board off. Yeah, this one's going to be easy. So easy. We are just about cooled off here. The next place I'm going to put in current is going to be right down here next to Tigris. And let's go right next to that transistor. So this time around I'm going to be putting in my current. I'm going to stick it in right here next to Q4 was 1403 okay All right, let's get us a free hand I'm gonna get rid of my ground probe and I'm gonna replace it with something I can clip on seriously where's my other leads oh it's, I forgot I was doing a video nothing's gonna be in the right spot Tricky. Well, I guess I'm kind of glad this one didn't turn out to be just like, hey, there it is. That's kind of a no-brainer. So the Please Bro solution that I was hoping for is not in this video. This is real troubleshooting, and I hope it is not shorted to ground somewhere stupid. Am I overlooking anything dumb? I've had these things sent here before with... Um, Previous liquid damage, ultrasonic cleaned for data recovery, and they come in with ECC main shorted to ground because somebody shorted it to ground when they were pulling the bottom shield off. All right, so let's get some more current into this thing. Only now I have a free hand because I hooked it up to my clamper. All right, so I'm going to be putting my current in this time. I'm going to put it in right here on VCC main at the bottom. Three amps of current. I think I'm going to get burned. I hope I get burned. If I get burned, it means I found the problem. If I don't get burned, nothing gets hot at all. That's hard to find. 
All right, I've got heat building there, but I think it's actually from my probe. Where else can we grab VCC main nearby? Let's grab it down here at the bottom left. This cap here. This is also VCC main. Looks that bump ground with my probe. So let's get VCC main in here. And then with that there, we're going to check this other spot where I thought I felt heat and see if we still get heat. How long can this thing dissipate 3 amps without getting warm? Jeez! I mean, it's my probe getting hot. <laughs> the board's not even getting warm. Good God, man. And I don't know about you, but I'm not pulling everything off of VCC main to find a VCC main short. Data recovery, maybe. For the sake of a working phone, nah. Let's see if we can't find this short. Something is shorted now. Let's give you a little more power. We're going to go ahead and raise our voltage. Not that that makes a difference. Let's just go ahead and short our probes. And then we're going to crank this right on up to 4 amps. So we'll crank that right up. All right, so we're going to do 4 amps of current. And we're going to put 4, four amps, guys, right here. Good God, four amps. Let's see if something will smoke for us today. Smoke signals. Oh, we got heat. Yeah, we got a heat source. I can't tell which side of the board it's on. I'm actually feeling a little bit of heat on the NAND. Okay, we're back on the top side now. And we're going to put our 4 amps of current right here into one of these VCC main caps next to the backlight circuit. no heat on this side we do have heat so let's put power into our little thing again I'm putting power in right here next to the transistor and I'm holding my left finger on top of the PMIC Now our hot spot is actually the NAND itself. It's the NAND getting hot, right? 
Do we have VCC main under NAND? I don't think I've ever ran into a short under NAND like that before. Yeah, VCC main doesn't even go to NAND. So what in the hell is getting hot right here? Could be one of these guys, right? C1251, C1260. But why wouldn't they get like blistering hot with my finger there? I mean, come on, I would, I would know this. This one looks a little discolored, right? Can you see that? That one, see how it's a little discolored on the end? That's our two caps. <clears throat> the bottom side is anode. So let's go ahead and put a little current into that cap. On the bottom side, right? Yeah, okay. It's like I want to believe that that's it. And I feel a little warmth. But the warmth is coming from my probe. It's not, this isn't the warmth of a... Well, no. Let's give it 5 amps. Max my little supply out here. 5 amps should pop that right off the board if that's where our short is. It's not. It would have melted it instantly. That's not shorted. Okay. Go back to the old fashioned method here. Finger on everything. 5 amps here. That is our short. Ah! So hard to find sometimes. All right, so we're going to take that off the board. And I'm going to do it with as little heat as possible. Yeah, guys, these things dissipate so much heat. I mean, so much heat. Five amps, and you still have a hard time finding a short using heat. That, that's that's really something. Now I can understand five amps through like a hunk of metal or something that's actually can sink some current, but five amps through that little bitty cap, and it was that hard for me to narrow down the heat source. Good God, man! Maybe I should start using free spray. Now, when it comes to data recovery, I'm not near as bold on this on just. Uh, putting power into the board like that, uh, I'm more. I, I try to track it down the best that I can, and I use try to use heat techniques as like my last resort. So, since I don't have my mini hot tweezers yet, hopefully one day here really soon, I'm getting in here and I'm trying to use my iron to dilute the solder on both sides of that capacitor because I want to lower its melting point just a hair. not working out too well for me so let's go ahead and pull that off the board oh and what is that that's right just a regular VCC main cap isn't it probably yeah 10 microfarad 6.3 volts um, let me before I heat this board up let me grab a donor that's a cap that I should have piles in stock of but I don't yes I don't have piles of them in stock yet and as long as I've got 10,000 of them on other boards it's not a really big deal. Okay, so we got our donor sitting there ready to go. Let's go ahead and pull this one off of here. We're going to warm things up a little slow. We are directly underneath the CPU right here, which is scary territory. So we want to give this thing just enough heat to melt, and we're almost there. Hopefully it's not welded. Okay. Let's kick that off to the side here. Add a little bit of flux. 
locked in our pads because we will be putting a cap back there. For the ground side of that's really hard to melt. Ooh, we don't need a blob that big. Jeez. Okay. That is good. As good as we're going to make it anyways. So let's go ahead and check, even with the board hot, we're going to check and see if we still have a short to ground. I'm putting my black probe on ground, and I'm going to put my other probe on A node of VCC main. And I get 0L. That means we did find our short, and the short's relieved. After I bragged about not pulling all the other shields first. I didn't have to pull a shield. I didn't even have to pull one shield. Some techniques. Jeez. <laughs> All right, so let's grab our donor part here. We're going to grab any one of these caps. Let's just grab this one. All right. And we are going to Drop that right into place here. Am I in view? Am I focused? Good as we're getting today, guys. Okay. You know, since I'm recording a video, I'm going to blow this thing off the table. Okay, we're going to add a little flux. We're going to go right in for the kill. We want to make sure the ground side of that is melted. And you could probably pull this off the board and nobody would ever notice it. So, all right, there we've got our component off of the board. While this board is hot, once again, I am on a timeline here. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on this that I don't have to. So the whole entire board is hot. It's a perfect time for me to go ahead and put the shields back on. Burning my fingers the whole time. Not a chance, man. Screw around with this long enough the board will cool off while I'm putting the shield back on it. Yeah, we're pretty close. Okay, we'll take it. Okay, let's get our bottom shield back on this. Man, this thing's hot. Ow! Now we're going to clean our flux off of it.
press there. Yes, yeah, shake. I've got, I, I got six cans now there, man. There's six of them. You're right. I was a little low. board and since I am uber confident in my repair we're gonna go ahead and heat this board back up and I'm using my nozzle up here suspended backwards and let's see did I just see a fray on our sticker I did let's get rid of that okay, so we'll heat this board up I'm heating the board back up because I'm gonna put the sticker on it cool laying on top of that sticker it'll stick it down nice and flat all right let's grab the customers housing and we're not going to do a full-blown reassembly here because I am just I'm going to test this a little bit before I do a full assembly on this phone First thing I'm going to check and see is whether or not our um, load is gone on the battery line. And I'm sure that it is because, well, we found a shorted cap after taking the, all but one of the shields off. Right after I bragged about going to do this without taking all the shields off, I took all the shields off. Only to find a problem that had nothing to do with anything under any of the shields. It was right there on the back side of the board. And it took some serious current to uncover it, man. Good God, man. Okay. At some point in time, my main camera shut off, so I don't know how much of uh, anything that I lost. Hopefully, it's all there. I imagine I'm going to get quite a bit of criticism from jabbing five amps of current into this board, but come on. Seriously? This phone's going to be fixed, and I'm really confident in it, too, because, well, I'm sitting here bragging about it, and I haven't plugged a screen into it. I'll never learn. <laughs> I'm never going to learn. All right, so let's grab my screen and not his because I don't trust his screen. I do trust mine. Um, we were going to check and make sure. So my supply is set to 5 amps. We're going to go ahead and reduce that back down to 2 amps because now I'm going to be putting my current through our little gatekeeper. All right, so when I hook up to VBAT, yay, we get 0 amps at 4 volts. So let's go ahead now and put a screen on this thing and for the sake of this video I'm gonna hook it straight to my supply so that we can see it boot since we did have a dead short on VCC main the battery on this phone is most likely going to be deader than a hammer so we're not gonna wait on it to charge to demonstrate that I did actually fix this phone yet yeah, if you use this method just be very very careful about where you put your voltage in at and I would highly recommend on VCC main, you should really even maybe start at closer to one volt, just depending on what could be shorted underneath of it. Uh, you don't want to blow out, like if you're doing it for data recovery, you don't want to blow out something crazy that prevents you, like, prevents you from getting data because you were in a hurry to find a short. So a lot of times on these general repairs like this, I take the quickest, most efficient route to the issue and fix it uh, because you know, it's, it, it, it's dollars and cents. It's money. So uh, let's go ahead and hook our supply up. We are set at 3.8. Let's crank that right up to 4 volts. And we're going to hook up to VBAT here. And the most we can pull is 2 amps because I have set a limit. And we are going to push the power button. Drum roll, please. 100 milliamps. 200 amps. Yeah, or 200 milliamps. We are booting. We no longer have a short to VCC main. This phone is going to be fixed. Now, I'm still going to check it as thoroughly as I can, provided I have a passcode. I think I have a passcode. So, yeah, there you go. I dug into this thinking that I was going to show you really quickly how to find the one of the shorted caps right next to the backlight circuit. And I'd also had it in my mind I was going to show everybody how to replace those without screwing up the backlight driver and having to do a whole backlight job, too. 
But this one trolled me, and it turned in, out to be something completely, utterly, entirely different. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Short to ground on VCC main. A really efficient way of finding it without using any tools other than a little bit of electricity and feeling. I think I used alcohol at one point in time during this repair, but it, it didn't help me. It didn't help me one bit. But if I would have used freeze spray or I would have used alcohol on the back side of the board, this would have been revealed instantly and I would not have pulled those other shields off of this board. So uh, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you all have successful repairs and um, I hope you have a good day and I, I really thank you for watching. So I'll see you all next time.